Mine's only in Beijing and Okay. The vision. Not the vision. I don't like the vision very much. Oh. All right, three, four. They call this a, a derivative as a rate of change. So, uh, is anybody in physics? All good. Uh, so, this is where your worlds are going to collide. All right. Um, okay, so there starts out with a little bit of a review. This was on, I think, maybe your last worksheet. Do you guys remember this wordage? Yes. Instantaneous rate of change? Yeah. Okay, so what does instantaneous rate of change mean? So, at that certain time, the slope is. Right, exactly. An instantaneous slope, right? Okay, so just notice uh, what they wrote for <coughs> the notation of that. I don't think it's necessary for you to write that down in your notes. Okay, but just realize that this is just simply taking the derivative at that specific point. Okay, so x sub zero, sub zero being your specific point um, that they would give you. Notice they use the, the definition of a limit to describe the derivative. Okay, so that's just understanding notation pieces there. Um, all right, let's talk about this. So motion along a line is kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to get the idea of displacement, uh, velocity, speed, acceleration, and uh, jerk. You know, like when uh, you quickly change directions? That's a jerk. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when that running back makes a quick move? That's a jerk. Blows his ACL. Exactly. See, it's too much jerk. Too, too much jerk on that thing. Okay, so, um, all right, so we're going to start with, uh, they generally start with S. Oh, that's a bad color. Let's try blue. S giving you your position, okay? So when they use S, um, they're generally referring to a position, okay? So um, if we're moving along a line, imagine a, a point or object that is moving back and forth along a horizontal line, okay? So that would be its position function. So is this going okay? to a lot of board problems? Yeah. No. Um, notice also that it says F of T. Why do you think there's a T in there? Probably time. Okay, so we're talking about time, um, the position at a specific time. Okay, so Alexi, do you remember how to find displacement? Yeah, it's a change and change. And it's like it's like not how far you've gone, but how far you've gone from your starting point. So over from your starting point. So yeah. yeah, it's exactly what it is. Okay, so your displacement is like um, if I start here and I walk down the hallway, okay, and I say, okay, well, my displacement is uh, from here to where I stopped down there. Okay, now it's possible that while I was walking, I maybe went this way towards the stairs first and then went that way, but it's where I ended that I'm trying to figure out my displacement. So you can have like a zero displacement because and come right back exactly okay so um, this is a definition I don't think that probably makes sense to your brain so I would say um, I would call this ending position minus beginning position so write that in whatever words you want to say okay so they just say a change of s is like your distance between your starting and your dis or your finish so maybe places where you've seen this before is like uh, technically what this is, is y2 minus y1, right? Okay, so if that's your displacement, do you understand what an average velocity is? What's that? How fast you go. How fast you go um, on average, right? So for example, if we were going to make a trip between here and Bozeman, Right, an average velocity might be 65 miles an hour. Okay, so say I start here and I end at Costco. Okay, clearly I'm not traveling the same speed the entire time, but we can say, well, our average speed was about this. Right. Okay, so to find our average velocity, all you do is you take your displacement 
and divide by the amount of time it took you to get there. Mm hmm I told you right small. I mean, actually it wasn't cute. Okay, so hopefully that kind of looks familiar to you. Do you guys see that change in S over change in T? Have you seen that before? It's like slope. It is literally the definition of slope. Okay, it's just a different reference. Now we're working in terms of time. Okay, so we got, if we talk about average velocity, in calculus, we have the ability to find instantaneous velocity, which is way more exciting. Okay, so velocity is simply the derivative of your position function. Okay, I probably wouldn't write down that, that uh, definition there of the different, the definition of a derivative. Um, you might say uh, v of t is equal to the derivative of your s of t. Okay. So ds dt is just the same notation as d or s prime of t. Okay, good so far. Okay, do you know what speed is? Okay, so speed is simply the absolute value of your velocity. Okay, so when we start working with velocity here, velocity, does anybody know the difference between velocity and speed? Is uh, speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. Kind of, yes. Can you be like, can you explain that in more detail for people who have no idea what a vector is? A vector has direction, and a scalar does not. Okay. Are you guys thinking about Despicable Me? Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. And he even he even referenced what a vector is in that movie as a. Magnitude and direction. Don't you remember that in the movie? Oh, yeah. We watched that. Oh, yeah. Mr. Ah. Yeah, so magnitude and direction is basically magnitude being how fast, at least in terms of velocity, would be how fast your object is moving. Uh, it also describes the direction. Okay, so if we have an object that is moving back and forth along a straight horizontal line, a positive velocity would be telling us that it's moving in a positive direction, meaning potentially to the right. Okay, negative telling us moving to the left. Okay, so velocity gives us speed and direction, whereas speed is just how fast the object is going. Okay, what else we got? Ooh, this is a good little chart. All right, write this down. This is going to be. A... Yeah, so draw this down. Yeah. yeah. What's that? My friend told me that um, Terrazas put something like this up on the board. Oh. And was like, someone like figured this out. And then when they tried to, they're like, no, we're just going to get this right. We don't have to. He's like, yeah, that was the point. So now I understand what she was talking about. <sighs> Not like that we won't get it, but like, I didn't understand what graph she was explaining, but now oh. I get it. Here, I got you. Okay, so this is basically a, a uh, chart describing the velocity of an object. Okay, so let's pretend let's pretend that uh, we've got a remote control car. Okay, so the remote control car is just sitting right here between Chaz and I, and we're gonna say that uh, the center zero is gonna be right in front of uh, let's say right in front of Lexi. Okay, so the first part of this says gives us two pieces of information, okay? So it says, right here at time zero, what's happening with the car? It's sitting still, right? So it's like three, two, one, here we go, okay? And then this tells us something about what happens with the car. What happens right here? It accelerates. It's accelerating, very good. Okay, so it has a positive slope, okay? And it also is, telling us that it's going in a positive direction. So we know that the car is also traveling towards Chaz. Okay? 
So we want to say something about acceleration. I'm really glad you used that word. Okay, so right here, it is accelerating. Okay, it is speeding up. Okay, so an important thing for you to understand is that when the acceleration is positive, okay, notice the slope of the line is up and the velocity is positive, then the object is speeding up. Okay, so it speeds up, it's going towards Chaz, and then what happens right here? It's steady. It has a constant speed, okay? So it starts by speeding up, okay? And then it travels for, I don't know, 10 miles per hour, okay? At a constant speed, and then all of a sudden what happens right here? It slows down. It slows down, okay? So it's still going towards Chaz, but now it's slowing down. Okay, so let's talk about this idea of slowing down. Okay, tell me about the acceleration. Acceleration is the slope of the line. Okay, it's a negative acceleration. So right here we have a negative acceleration, a negative slope. So acceleration is negative. And what is the velocity? Is the line above the x-axis or is the line below the x-axis? Positive, good. So therefore, the object is, wow, that was a terrible S, slowing down. OK, good. So exactly at this point here, okay, right when the, the velocity hits 0, it stops for a complete instant, a very quick instant, hits the chest, and then all of a sudden it's going backwards. OK, so it's coming back towards my table. Okay, so right here, what's happening? Speeding up. So what kind of acceleration do I have? The slope of the line is a positive line, or excuse me, a negative line. I almost said that wrong. Okay, so my acceleration is negative, and what is my velocity? Velocity is negative, and the object is speeding up, so it's getting faster towards me. Okay, so this car comes back to me. Okay, right here, what's happening right here at this little uh, curve? So slowing down. Okay, so basically what happens with this car is it's coming back, it speeds up, and then it slows back down. Okay, so right at this bottom here, this is the point when it starts to slow down again. Okay, so tell me about the acceleration right there where it's slowing down. Positive acceleration. And the velocity is? Is negative. Okay, so then right here, what's happening? Well, it stops for a second. Okay, so a whole second it just sits there. Okay, and velocity is zero. And then what happens right here? Okay, which travel is it traveling towards me or is it traveling towards Chaz right here? Chaz. Chaz. So in a positive direction, uh, your acceleration is positive. It's going fast towards Chaz. Okay, so thing to note about your acceleration and your speeding up versus slowing down. When are you when are your objects speeding up? So speeding up right here and right here. Tell me about your acceleration and your velocity. They're the same. Okay, so either they're both positive or they're both negative. That tells us about speeding up. First is when the object is slowing down. One is, oops, I forgot my last word there. Slowing down. Okay, so when they're opposite, it slows down. Okay, so that's a good point to make. Okay, let's talk about uh, Galileo's invention. You guys remember Galileo? Anybody remember what he realized? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, I have to tell you about acceleration really fast. Here, write this down. Sorry, my bad. 
So acceleration, and we've kind of already been talking about it because it's the slope of your velocity. So the slope of your velocity is simply your derivative. So uh, this is a correct notation. This says exactly uh, your acceleration is the derivative of your velocity, which, by the way, happens to be your second derivative of your position function. Okay. And if you were asked to find jerk, jerk is what? Derivative of, acceleration. derivative of your acceleration. Perfect. Okay, so you can say uh, your jerk is your derivative of acceleration. So that's basically your third derivative of your position, right? So you guys remember the story of Galileo? Do you remember he was the fellow that was sitting under the tree and an apple fell on his head? Wasn't that him? Oh, that was Newton. Oh, yeah, you're right. Dang it. Different guy. Same idea, though. We're talking about gravity. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks there, Anthony, for... Okay, so uh, this little, uh, I'm going to kind of get into more detail to this. So what I want you to write down, what? What did you say? You whistled and like, what is my phone? Oh. That wasn't me. Okay, so we're going to talk about the, the position of a falling object. Okay, so uh, basically what Galileo finds is that an object will fall um, at a constant rate, okay, and it's basically one half times the pull of gravity times t squared, okay, so um, let me explain that piece in a second here. Uh, then we can include the initial velocity times t plus your initial height. Okay. What did you say? Like how how did you word the first part of it? One what half times so like your the, the average rate it falls. Yeah, the constant rate that it falls. Yes. Okay, so uh, basically what he discovered is that things fall at approximately thirty two feet per second squared, depending on if you're working in feet. So your G is 32 feet per second squared or depending on if you're working in meters that would be equivalent to 9.8 meters per second okay uh, what do you think the T is in reference to? T is your time Do you know what your V sub O is? Initial velocity. Okay, so the v, the sub O, and this you'll start to see within um, any kind of science versus math. Um, anything with that sub O is in reference to initial. So initial velocity. Uh, it is also important that you understand initial velocity. What is your initial time at time zero? So think of this at time zero. Okay, that's kind of a helpful hint for things. Um, and our last thing is our h sub o. Any guesses for that? Is your initial height good? Okay, so let's create an example. And we're going to throw an object. What kind of object should we throw? Milk. Did you say milk? Well, I have milk, so. <laughs> like a gallon of milk? We're going to throw a gallon of milk. 
<laughs> All right, we're gonna throw. All right, we're gonna throw a gallon of milk off a uh, off a roof. How about that? I don't recommend you actually doing this. That's right. All right, so things that we need in order to create our position function are uh, we need an initial velocity. Let's say, well, we're going to throw it, though, not just drop it. We're going to throw it. So we're going to initially give it some force. What did you say? 135 miles an hour. 135 miles an hour. Oh, let's use meters per second or feet. Let's do feet because let's think, yeah, let's think feet. Um, so let's say we're going to throw it. Um, we're going to throw it upwards. No, we're going to throw it downwards. No, I don't know. What do you got? Up? I don't, well, I haven't got that far. Sorry. Still working on my initial velocity. We're going to throw it at uh, 48 feet per second. I have no idea if you can actually throw that fast, but I went with up. We're going to throw it up with 48 feet per second, and we're going to do it off of the fourth floor. Wait, is it second squared or second? Uh, velocity is uh, just seconds, feet per second. Acceleration is seconds squared. Um, roof is, let's just say it's 40 feet high. Okay. It's like a four foot, a four story building. It's not in Belgrade. It's in Billings. Oh, yeah. The green, that granary. We're throwing it off the granary, and it is 40 foot hot tall building. Should we actually test this? Yeah. How would we actually know? There's ladders to climb up on top of We have to get slow motion camera. Yeah, we have to get slow motion camera. And watch. Oh, we need somebody who can actually throw it that fast. It might require like a slingshot of some kind. I don't know how to do this. Alright, so what is my G for this one? No, my G, G. So my, my acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second. Okay, so we're working with feet. So then we have T squared. Uh, and we're going to have a, since we're throwing it upwards, our initial velocity will be positive. Okay, so plus 48 T. And then we're starting at 40 feet high. Okay, so let's let's ask you a couple questions about this scenario. Question number one. When does it hit the ground? Okay, so how are we going to decide when this function when this milk Hits the ground. Good. Okay, so since this is our position, remember that S of T is how high the milk is off the ground. Okay, so when it hits the ground, it's going to be exactly zero feet high off the ground. Right? So we're going to take zero and we're going to set it, or our function, and we're going to set it equal to zero. Can I make a quick uh, simplification and say one half times 32 makes 16? Yep, 16. All right, here we go. Okay, how do I solve a quadratic equation? 
We could, or we could just use the quadratic formula. We could divide by, what do you think we can divide by? Four? Eight? Oh yeah, 40. There you go, let's divide by eight. So that will be nicer. So now we have 2t squared plus 6t plus 5. Is that factorable? 10? No, it's not. Okay, so we're going to go t equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, so since we're working in time, whoa, let's move. Uh, we can get a decimal solution. So let's see what the inside of the radical is. What is happening? Does anybody want to do that in their calculator? Mine might take a while. There we go. 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. Please don't be a negative. Dang it. <laughs> uh oh. So clearly we can't throw that fast. This is what happens when we make up things. We live in an alternate universe. <laughs> Oh, I know what happened. This is not, no, it's my mistake. I screwed this up. Anthony, can you tell me where I screwed up? Oh, you should have said something way earlier. I screwed this up. Anthony, Anthony how could you oh, let me go this far? Okay, no, no, no. This is just going to affect a small thing. Fix this in your notes. So remember when, when, uh, gravity comes into play it goes downwards okay so we're talking about downwards so this very first thing here has to be a negative okay so gravity pulls things downward so that means our position function should be negative our 16 should be negative and our 2 should be negative therefore making this minus a negative there we go holy cow that's better all right, readjust. We got this. Okay, so now it's going to be 6 squared plus 4 times 2 times 5. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we have a squared 76. So I'm going to do negative 6 plus the square root of 76 divided by 4. Okay, so our first one is... Oh, divided by negative 4. That's a ne another negative. So that should be a negative. So we get negative 0. 0.68, which makes sense. And then negative 6 minus the square root the quadratic formula divided by negative 4. So 3.68. Okay, so uh, which of those scenarios makes sense in terms of our real life world? The 3.68, right? The negative, you can't have a negative amount of time, so we can't include that. So it's going to hit the ground exactly 3.68 seconds after I throw the jug of milk. And that's all we need to know? That was our first question. What else do we want to find out? Oh. Don't we want to find out how fast the milk was traveling? What velocity hit the ground? Absolutely. <laughs> what velocity does it hit the ground? Okay, so how would I figure this out? Okay, so all I have to do is figure out, first of all, what is the velocity function, and then I can plug in the time. Okay, so how do you find a velocity function? What? The derivative of the position function. Okay, so if my position function is, uh, was negative 16, don't forget the negative, 
plus 48t plus 40. Okay, my velocity is simply the derivative of that. Okay, so what is the derivative of negative 16t squared? Negative 32t and derivative of 48t? 48 and derivative of 40 goes away. So now I can plug in my 3.8 into t to find exactly how fast that gallon of milk was traveling when it hit the ground. Somebody want to throw that into the calculator for me? By the way, should I be getting a positive or a negative number? Negative. The negative, right? Because when it hits the ground, it's traveling downward. Okay, so we should get a negative number. Oh, negative 69.76. 69.76. Okay, now how would I label this if this is a velocity? Feet per second, good. Um, ooh, let's ask this question. Let's see. Uh, how high does it go? Do you guys like how good my English is? How high does it go? We ask these questions every Sorry, time. I can't spell high. What? We ask these questions every time. They're going to ask the questions. Oh, so sometimes there's only one of them. Sometimes there's three, sometimes there's one. Yep. But to find one, you have to do all three times. Sometimes. Not not usually. You might have to do two steps. Like, for example, it might have initially just said, uh, at what velocity does the thing hit the ground? Which you would have had to first find when it hit the ground and then found the velocity. Okay, so what do you think? How high can how can I figure out how high it goes? Now I want to use calculus. There's a way to do it with using what? No, say that again. I think I was just interrupting you. When what? Ooh, why the slope is zero? Ah, because for a for an instant it stops and then comes back down, right? Okay, so our velocity is zero for a second. So we got to first figure out exactly when the velocity is zero, and then we can figure out how high it goes. Okay, so if we take our velocity. and set it equal to zero, we can figure out when it stopped. Okay, so uh, if we solve this, we would subtract 48 and divide by negative 32, and I don't know what that is, 1 point, that's all I got. Anybody? Exactly? Weird. 1.5 seconds. Okay, so that's uh, when it got to its max height. How are we going to figure out what the max height is? Go back to the position. Good. Okay, so if I go back to my position function and plug in 1.5, I can find the, the height of it. So it was negative 16 <laughs> t squared plus 48 times 1.5 plus 40. Okay, so can somebody tell me that? I can tell you that it's bigger than 40. I'm going to guess 68. Just don't be, mm -hmm. I was thinking 68 as well. Really? That's, cool. That's a little weird. That's kind of weird. I was really pulled to 68. Like, I couldn't even think of another number. Huh. <laughs> 76? Oh, bummer. 76. Exactly 76? 76 uh, feet. Okay. So here's another thing that they're going to ask you, and they'll, they'll, they'll ask you in reference to left and right, because sometimes the, the object will be moving left and right. So they'll say, um, 
When is the object moving up? When, when is it moving up? And when is it moving down? Okay, so to decide what direction an object is moving and its, its interval, we want to know when it stops. Okay, so when does this uh, gallon or milk stop? Okay, so it only stops at 1.5 seconds. So, uh, okay, so for me to decide if an object is moving up, what, do I, what am I looking at? What piece tells me what direction the object is moving? The velocity, okay? So I'm analyzing the velocity function. I need to figure out when the velocity is positive, okay? So this is looking for the velocity being positive, so greater than zero, versus moving down. I'm looking for when the velocity is negative. Okay, so if my velocity function was, what was it, negative 32t plus 48, okay, all I have to do is first figure out when it stopped, okay, which we already did, okay, so it stops, what was it again, 1.5, okay, and then what I do is I do what's called a number line test, okay. So all I'm going to do is do 1.5, okay? And basically, all values that are less than 1.5 will be one direction, and all values to the right of 1.5 will be the other direction. Is that a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Answer that. Oh, I'm almost done. Can I finish this? Okay. So um, give me a value that is less than 1.5. 1. 1. 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1, and I'm going to plug it into my velocity equation, and just see if it's a positive or a negative value. Okay, so if I plug 1 into there, what will I get? Negative 32 plus 48 is a positive number, right? So positive here. Okay, and if I plug a value bigger than 1.5, such as 2, if I plug 2 in, do I get a positive or a negative number? A negative. Okay, so we can say. Um, now this scenario, we would probably only have a starting time of zero, but let's pretend that it's a moving along the line idea, which you're gonna see in your homework, okay? So you could say that the object is moving up when your time is less than 1.5. So up when time is less than 1.5. And do I say or equal to? No. no, because what happens at the equal to 1.5? It stopped at that time. Good. Okay, and down when time is greater than 1.5. Okay. Sound good? Okay, that should at least get you started there. What's that? 